Welcome back to another episode. Part of traveling on the road with a old vehicle is fixing all the shit that goes wrong. So I noticed a um, bit of a clunk in the front end when we were doing a few tracks the other day, and um, I just checked it up, just checked the wheel bearings, and it was heavy to play in this left one. It's enough play for me to warrant changing them. Um, they've probably been in there for like, I don't know, 60,000, something like that. I've repacked them a couple of times, but yeah, the last time I repacked them on that long ago, and they're just not really staying staying good. So uh, yeah, just a bit of maintenance got to be done. Better to do it now before it snowballs and causes more problems. So yeah, I'm just running through how we do it. This is an old car, so it's probably fairly different on on your newer models. But if you're looking for an older vehicle and how to change wheel bearings, I'll, I'll run you through how we do it. Obviously, this is. Um, in a campsite, so I haven't got all the tools of a workshop on that, so uh, I should be a bit more sort of bush mechanic than probably the, the best way to do it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's get into it, see what happens. Right, so obviously first step, get the wheel and the freewheel and hub off. And obviously yeah, it's different depending on which hub you've got. So now I've just got to get the um, the actual hub off, I suppose. So, Toyota, they use these cone washers which basically they centre the they centre the hub or they position it I suppose when you nip it up. They can be a bit of a pain to get off so um, what you need is a brass punch and you basically just bang on the end of them. Uh, and eventually that will loosen. You can sort of go around and then tap here and you'll get it off. This one's been replaced, so if you've got one that's flat, like these are designed to be banged on, see how they're rounded. If you find one that's flat like that, just pop the nut back on because you don't want to ruin that thread, which I've done that before on this one and had to re, re tap it. So, uh, right here, let's start smacking some things. Right, so now I'll just pop that um, C clip, so clip off, take off the hub sockets, and I'll pretty well be in there. Oh, I'll take the caliper off as well. One thing I noticed as well, that tire rod ends cactus. I had checked it from this side, but I didn't see the split right around the back, so definitely pays to check shit properly, because that'd be an easy one to do right now while I got it all apart. And that's definitely part of the, the clunking and carrying on that I'm hearing when I'm driving, so. Oh, uh, well, can't win them all. Right, yeah, so I just pulled that caliper off just to get the whole um, the whole disc off on these cars. Yeah, this is a perfect time if you've got to do discs or uh, brake pads. But I've done them recently, to be honest. That 
disc feels a bit how you going so it would be nice if I could be doing that but I don't have a disc with me or obviously a machine shop so she's just gonna have to do it for a little longer that's the bearing you can see all that all the black grease that's excess heat it doesn't feel too bad but it definitely feels there's a bit more movement in it than there should be so yeah so all I've got to do now is just pop that seal off the back um, take the inner bearing out and then punch out the the races just clean it all up brake cleaner repack them and away we go yeah just another point on um, like doing this sort of stuff you got to make sure you got like everything you need obviously the knowledge to be able to do it but all the right tools because if you're doing it like this you know you can't just run a rep go and buy something so um, yeah, I've got literally everything in there so just down to things like a G clamp to compress the the brake cylinders to put the um, to put it back on the rotor um, obviously grease and you know, pry bars punches all that sort of stuff so you gotta yeah if, you, if you're gonna be doing this obviously the knowledge is, is the key but you gotta have all the right um, stuff to be able to do it even just having a tarp gives you a nice clean sort of workplace to work on if you drop something it's not going to go straight in the dirt so anyway we'll keep going like this Right, yeah, so I punched all that out. <coughs> so I'll just do this in reverse order. So I'll just punch this race in, um, load the bearing with grease, and then punch the seal in. Flip it over and do exactly the same on the other side. How to pack these with grease, you basically just put a bit in your palm and you just slap it in like that until you see it pop out the top. You got a few more? Uh, oh, we've got so many oysters, Shane. Did you grab them? They got them in the bag. Oh, cool.
Right, yeah, so you got the caliper back on. Um, now just got to reassemble all this and tighten up the tighten up the lock nuts to seat the bearing. Um, yeah, you need a torque wrench for that and the manual as well because a lot of models have sort of specific ways to do it. This says 59 newton meters. Um, rotate it a few times. Blah blah blah. There's a couple a couple of steps. If you're doing this, yeah, get the manual. Technical stuff. That's good. You can get like a spring gauge to check it. Probably going to do it in the factory, but we don't have that luxury. Last one. Washes and nuts.
Right on. What's that done? Well, I'll check the other side and do in with them if they need doing. Probably doing it at some stage. I might wait to go back past this civilization and get some more grease. Um, but yeah, it's essentially how you do it in a nutshell. Um, on the side of the road, obviously, it'd be a little bit easier if you had access to a workshop with proper tools. Um, yeah, I hope it helps someone. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks, man.